Fiona just couldn't believe how incredibly bored she was. She quickly and effortlessly settled into her luxury hotel room, as she had done many times before a hundred or more times, at least a dozen times in the same city in the same hotel. Her generous office budget allowed her to enjoy a wonderful dinner downstairs alone. This was a well-known problem with business travel. The evenings were usually boring and lonely, but fortunately short. And Fiona usually had something to do besides preparing for the next day, which she had long ago mastered. She always took something with her to distract herself, be it a book, a puzzle, or something streaming from the internet. But for some reason that evening she just wanted to be home. Home for her was in Toronto, Ontario at the center of the universe. In their late thirties, Marcus and Fiona Farley were a typical career-oriented couple living in a prestigious apartment in the city center. Despite their status, or because of it, they often found themselves sent into deep space anywhere and everywhere across the continent. Business trips for both spouses occurred on a loosely structured schedule, approximately once a month. But for both, unforeseen and urgent situations that required their personal presence arose quite often, although completely irregularly. This made it quite difficult to keep track of each other's movements, these corporate representatives and troubleshooting experts. Marcus traveled to Seattle two days before Fiona, expecting to meet with three clients there. Two days later, Fiona flew to Denver for a few simple meetings to network with a couple of clients. For Marcus, these trips were just the same old thing boredom. Fiona had just reached veteran status, and while she had initially viewed her solo deployments as exciting adventures, opportunities to exercise independence and demonstrate confidence, she now felt it was a waste of time when she could have easily done it all via email. Indeed, these so-called mandatory off-site meetings quickly became boring. Fiona refrained from calling her husband immediately, deciding to wait until their regular call time. Given the difference in time zones, this would be in the evening, after dinner, closer to bed. Meanwhile, it occurred to her that perhaps she should do something active to combat the looming melancholy that threatened to consume her. Fiona always took some kind of evening dress with her in case the host company had an evening reception, which they sometimes did. Putting on an outfit for a party with a bunch of virtual strangers wasn't much fun, but at least it relieved the boredom a little. In an attempt to break away from today's terrible monotony, Fiona decided to change clothes, change out of her work clothes, and go down to the bar for a cocktail. She took off her tights, breathing a sigh of relief after a day of work, and put on the thigh-high stockings she kept for emergencies. The so-called evening dress was her version of the little black dress. It was charcoal gray with glitter accents, and she realized it was the shortest dress in her wardrobe. The dress was a modified align with a fitted elastic top and built-in cups. It could be strapless, but Fiona always used the thin straps that came with it. Her stiletto heels matched her dress charcoal with sparkles, and a small, discreet gray clutch completed the look. Feeling almost stable in her not-quite-familiar heels, she caught herself thinking, why did she even take such uncomfortable shoes with her? Walking casually towards the bar, she sat down on a chair and ordered a cocktail. Looking around the dark room, Fiona felt that since she wasn't going to a party, her outfit might be a little over the top or under, depending on your point of view. Still, whether her ensemble matched or not, she sat and sipped her cosmopolitan. The dress and heels were certainly okay for the party, but sitting on the bar stool, Fiona was completely unaware of how much leg she was exposing. In fact, when she crossed her legs, she attractively showed off more than just the edges of her stockings. In the darkness of the cozy bar, her evening dress and accessories looked like flirting attire. This is what caught Sid's attention as soon as Fiona entered the bar. Sid was sitting at the bar, and as soon as Fiona entered, he immediately noticed her. She was dressed to the nines, sitting at the bar, and was frustrated by the lack of attention, no fireworks, no admiration. She still felt not only bored to tears, but unusually lonely. Sipping her first cocktail after dinner, her shoulders slumped, Fiona sadly decided to return to her room when suddenly a new cocktail appeared in front of her. From a fan, the waiter said mysteriously, well, that changes things, Fiona decided, picking up another glass and looking around the room. 
she quickly noticed a man sitting alone and looking at her intently. When their eyes met, he nodded, correctly assuming that he was her admirer. She nodded in response and raised her glass in a silent gesture of gratitude. Fiona watched as he lazily stood up from his seat, taking the drink with him, and slowly walked towards her, skirting the space of the hall. She found his smile quite charming the corners of his mouth were slightly raised, as if he knew some secret. Stopping at the empty seat next to her, he asked, Can I sit with you? His voice was soft and somehow attractive. Please, Fiona replied automatically, moving a little to make room for him. Thank you. He slid easily onto the chair. Fiona looked at him carefully, as if expecting something to happen. He stared back, loving the way her face combined curiosity and slight confusion. I, uh, she mumbled as he sat down next to her. Let me guess, he said softly. You've never done anything like this before, have you? Fiona's eyes went wide, but she didn't say a word. Don't worry, I'm harmless. Well, in moderation. Or as the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy described Earth, he chuckled, almost harmless. Fiona laughed in spite of herself. After a short pause during which they studied with each other, he introduced himself. My name is Sidney, or just Sid. And holding out his hand, he asked, How is life spoiling you? Oh, okay, thanks, Fiona replied, turning to offer him a hand in return. Ah, uh, hi, Sid. I'm Fiona, you can just say fi. She wasn't sure why she said that. Only her husband and elderly father called her that. Despite this, Sid took her hand and brought it to his lips. It's a pleasure, fi. At first, they chatted warily about small things, revealing only select details about themselves, as they sipped their drinks. Married. Children, no. Divorced. One son, however, is violent. House in Toronto. My husband, Marcus, and I often travel on business trips throughout Canada and the United States. My base is in San Diego. I'm a sales representative, almost always on the road. While they were talking, Fiona thought, Hmm, interesting, rather charming interlocutor. Maybe a little persistent, but not too intrusive, and certainly not overly confident. She was surprised that she gradually began to relax and enjoy his company. Of course, it didn't hurt that she'd already had a few cosmopolitans. She had no reason to suspect that Sid was actually a cunning hunter in sheep's clothing. Yes, in a sense he was, or at least he considered himself a skilled and skilled, if relatively harmless, predator, relentlessly pursuing the ideal prey, the ideal woman for one night. Although, perhaps, he was not so much a predator as an opportunist, even a serial opportunist. Sid was firmly convinced that there were no bad casual connections on the road, so he created his own opportunities any harbor in a storm, as he himself called it. The ideal prey, in his opinion, was a lonely, bored, attractive, middle-aged woman preferably still married, curious, but still faithful. Fiona met all the criteria. She may be, he thought with a satisfied smile, an ideal option for one night. While they were talking, he took every opportunity to lean closer to her, speaking frankly and confidentially, and touching her arm or shoulder at every opportunity. Fiona noticed that he signaled to the waiter to bring another cocktail her third cosmopolitan. She hadn't drank this much for a long time. It seemed to her that she needed to make at least a symbolic objection, if not for the sake of decency, then for the sake of her own sense of self. Are you, by any chance, trying to get me drunk? She laughed coquettishly. Who? I? Sid exclaimed in mock horror. Fiona laughed so sincerely that all hints of objections instantly disappeared. Sid suddenly straightened up in his chair and looked around. Hey, Fi, don't you think we're in plain sight here? Like on stage or something? Fiona looked back and had to agree with him. Perhaps, he said. We could move to that table over there, there'd be a little more privacy. Finding no reason to object, Fiona suddenly found herself in the semi-darkness at a table in the corner, with Sid nestled next to her. Sid signaled to the waiter, and soon another cocktail arrived his fourth, just as Fiona tried unsuccessfully to put more distance between herself and Sid. Having accepted the offered drink, she thanked the waitress, 
and then, with disbelief in her voice and a slight smile, she turned to her new acquaintance and sincerely asked, Are you hoping to take advantage of the situation? Sid looked at her innocently, sipping his light beer, and blinked his eyes theatrically. This won't work with me, she said, trying to muster up as much resolve as her mild intoxication allowed. Showing her engagement ring, she confidently stated, I'm married, as if that completely ruled out the possibility of a continuation. Sid slowly increased his charm as the cocktails disappeared and were replaced by new ones. So young and... Oh, come on, I'm not young. I doubt you're older than me. How old are you? 27. Well, that's enough. You need to get your eyes checked. I'm 37. Well, you definitely don't look your age. He deliberately underestimated her age to flatter her, and although he was surprised that she was a full ten years older than him, this only provoked him even more. Oh my God, he continued, a woman as beautiful and sexy as you should not be left alone, especially in a bar. If Fiona enjoyed the attention, it was largely because she was suddenly intrigued that a young man ten years her junior was clearly interested in her. Although she was married and well into adulthood, the realization that she was attracted to someone younger filled her with a new sense of confidence. On top of that, she was no longer bored and lonely. On the contrary, she suddenly began to enjoy socializing and became increasingly drunk. After a few more minutes of conversation, exchanging glances and cocktails, Sid, somehow unnoticed by Fiona, began stroking her arm and then her shoulder in a circular motion. The affectionate touch did not go unnoticed. You dressed up for a party that never happened, right? What a disappointment. It would be a shame if such a magnificent image was wasted, he said, suddenly taking her hand and standing up abruptly, half dragging her, half pulling her from the table, he continued. Let's dance. He didn't wait for her answer. He simply led her out onto the almost empty dance floor. Fiona ignored the warnings in her head that persistently told her that this might not be the best idea. She allowed herself to be caught up in the excitement of the moment, and, she must admit, a slight sense of the vicious situation. It didn't hurt that every time they took a break between dances, a new cocktail miraculously appeared on the table. And most paradoxically, the more alcohol she drank, the more confident and stable she felt in her high heels. They danced to several songs, pausing in between. Sid touched her arms, her sides, and even her buttocks but she did not seem to attach much importance to it and did not mind. Finally, a slow melody began to play, allowing them to cuddle even closer to each other. This touch was almost electric in its intensity of excitement. Fiona grabbed him by the shirt, both hands gripping the fabric at his shoulders, but she couldn't decide whether to push him away or pull him closer. No, 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 we shouldn't. This is wrong, she protested, but did not break away. Sid, stepping back a little, slid his hand under her dress and grabbed her breast, squeezing it without embarrassment. No, you can't do that, I'm married. But her protests became less decisive, less confident, less sincere, until her voice finally lost its alarming notes, and her facial expression gave way to a slight smile. After all, they didn't do anything really wrong, right? Well, maybe just a little. She clicked her tongue softly and removed his hand from her breast, smiling, but she couldn't shake the feeling that the touch was too good to just reject. Sid felt a surge of confidence. His hand on her chest and a fleeting kiss let him know that he was on the right track, but the best signal was that Fiona calmed down and reduced her objections to nothing. Sid was delighted. He felt that everything was going according to plan. His light touches, a fleeting kiss, and the way Fiona calmed down herself made him understand that she was practically hooked. While they danced, he gave her more and more cocktails, and each sip of alcohol helped her relax and remove the remaining barriers. They returned to the dance after each break, and soon their movements ceased to be ordinary dance steps and more resembled something like attraction and caresses. Fiona did not object, and Sid pressed himself closer to her, their dance slowly reduced to the fact that they were just standing and swaying in place. Sid leaned down and kissed her for real this time, their tongues intertwined in a passionate kiss. Fiona pulled away, muttering, This is wrong. Oh no, no, no. 
we shouldn't. But Sid continued to gently touch her lips, and she no longer made much effort to break the kiss. Don't. Stop. I'm married. Her objections sounded weaker and weaker, like a winding box slowly stopping. And as her protests died down, excuses began to form in Fiona's head. It's so nice, so good. This makes me happy, she told herself. And the thought became more and more firmly established in her head. I'm actually not doing anything wrong. Not now. Sid soon pulled her into a deep kiss again, their lips fused, tongues intertwined, and her inner desire grew stronger. Fiona felt her excitement building, her body pulsing with anticipation when she suddenly remembered it was time to call her husband Marcus. I need to contact my husband, she said, stepping away and feeling a little relieved, only to find that her phone was dead. Oh no, sorry, but I have to call it a night. My phone is dead and I have to call him from my room. Fiona felt a slight sense of relief. Well, I'll take you, Sid said, smiling. I wouldn't like it to end this evening so early. Give yourself some time and we'll see how you feel after talking to your husband. Fiona nodded, realizing that this might not be the best idea, but she was already too drunk to clearly think through the consequences. Feeling a little guilty and a little sly, Fiona dialed her husband's number from her hotel room phone. However, his cell phone immediately went to voicemail. How strange, she thought. She waited and tried again, but again there was no response. This caused her confusion. Why doesn't he answer? Fiona had written down his hotel and room number on her phone, but it was now dead. Fortunately, she remembered the name of the hotel and, with the help of the operator, got through to the reception. However, when she asked to be connected to Marcus Farley's number, she was told that he had checked out a few hours ago. How strange, she thought, feeling increasingly anxious. A light knock on the door interrupted her thoughts. She carefully opened the door and was surprised to see Sid with a bottle of champagne in his hands. Reading her face, Sid guessed, couldn't get through to him, huh? No, she answered with some weariness in her voice. Her obvious anxiety was still present, but the alcohol that was still circulating in her blood was gradually softening her emotions. He's probably just, Sid said, making air quotes, somewhere in a loud bar. He stepped forward and gently hugged her with one arm. Hey, don't worry. Fiona turned away from his embrace, but Sid interpreted this as an invitation and, walking through the threshold, closed the door behind him put the bottle on the table and hugged her tightly with both hands. I just don't understand, she whispered, her arms hanging limply at her side. Everything is fine. He is a grown man. I'm sure everything is fine with him. Sid began to rock her a little, patting her on the back, trying to convey in words his message that this was just a friendly hug, support. However, while still holding her too close, he suddenly said, you know, the reason his phone is sending you straight to voicemail is probably because he's probably gaming right now. Fiona pulled back sharply, and now they were holding each other's forearms, looking into each other's eyes. What do you mean, plays? Well, for example, flirting with someone. No, this is impossible. It's simply impossible. Are you sure? Sid asked with a slight mockery. Okay, I can accept that he will occasionally chat with someone behind the bar while he drinks his evening drink, but that's about it. Nothing more. No, Marcus wouldn't do that. He just couldn't. Fiona couldn't even say out loud what exactly her husband couldn't do. The very thought of this seemed absurd to her. Well, I'm glad you're so confident in him. Although, to be honest, he would be the exception to the rule. Fiona thought that a barely noticeable note of irony slipped into Sid's voice. No, Marcus is as loyal as, like an old dog. I know him well. He's simply not capable of this, she insisted, although perhaps not with the same confidence as at the beginning of the conversation. Why not? Everyone I know plays when they are away from home. Not every time, of course, but sooner or later everyone does it. Not Marcus, she said gripping his forearms a little tighter. Their confrontation of views continued. Well, tell me then, what does he do in the evenings after he finishes his work? Same as me, I guess. Eats dinner, 
gets ready for the next day, watches TV. Or maybe sometimes he goes down to the bar and meets an interesting person or woman to brighten up a few lonely hours, Sid continued with a sly smile. No, I mean, he might go down to the bar, but he would. I mean, I would know if he... Oh, come on, don't be so naive. Do you really think your husband is that innocent? In my experience, almost everyone cheats on business trips. Not always, but from time to time for sure. Sid said confidently, although he did not say out loud his main goal, to convince Fiona that her husband behaves exactly the same as everyone else, which means she can afford something similar. Whether you like it or not, this is reality. I'm pretty sure I would understand, Fiona said, but without the same conviction. And I'm absolutely sure that you wouldn't understand, Sid added, and to finally end this argument, he suddenly leaned down and kissed her on the lips while simultaneously penetrating her mouth with his tongue so as not to give her the opportunity to continue the conversation. To her surprise, Fiona felt a sharp surge of arousal, and instead of pushing him away, she kissed him back with reflexive passion, pressing herself tightly against him. Her arguments, which only a second ago seemed logical and important to her, began to dissolve under the influx of emotions. They continued to kiss like teenagers, uncontrollably, forgetting about everything in the world. Sid continued to whisper barely audible words to her between kisses so that her already confused mind would increasingly agree with his reasons. Gradually, she began to believe that his belief that everyone does it was indeed justified. And soon, he hoped, Fiona would also agree that what is permissible for one is permissible for another. When they finally broke up, moving away from each other and studying each other's faces, Sid said with a smile, You know what they say, if it goes one way, then the other is also fair. Fiona trembled with emotions overwhelming her. Strange, but she felt neither anger nor desire for revenge. Instead, she was overcome with excitement, the anticipation of something new and exciting. Once she accepted the idea that Marcus might be doing the same, she accepted it as a kind of tacit permission to play herself. Or rather, she decided that this permission was implied. She didn't think she was cheating, she was just playing too. And suddenly she was filled with gratitude toward Marcus for this unexpected feeling of freedom and pleasure. Meanwhile, Marcus, as it turned out, completed all his meetings ahead of schedule. He decided to return home earlier than planned, and on the way home, stopped by Denver to surprise Fiona and spend the evening with her in a foreign city. When he entered the airport lounge, he turned off his phone, put it on airplane mode, and forgot to turn it back on, despite numerous announcements about flight delays at the Seattle airport. Returning to each other, Sid and Fiona shared a kiss again. This time the kiss was slow and more deliberate, but still full of passion. A gap formed between their bodies, into which their hands gradually slid, touching each other, exploring and enjoying these touches. Fiona, unexpectedly, even for herself, lowered her hand down and placed it on Sid's protruding package. Wow, she thought, realizing how big he was. Although, to be honest, it was difficult for her to compare it with anything. Sid, in turn, slid his hand under her dress. Fiona tried not to let this excitement get the better of her, even though her body was burning with desire. However, her curiosity quickly overcame any remaining hesitation or guilt. Fiona suddenly squatted down, which caught Sid by surprise and caused his hand to leave her body. But he quickly regained his bearings, sliding his hands to the neckline of her dress to grab her breasts. Fiona, squatting in front of Sid, felt the tension in the air become almost palpable. Their gazes met, and at that moment the silence between them spoke more eloquently than any words. Both realized that there was now little room for doubt on the thin line between friendship and something deeper. Fiona instinctively reached out to him, as if they were drawn by an unknown force that they could not control. Sid, feeling her hands gently rest on his shoulders, continued to gently run his fingers along her arms, as if trying to prolong this moment of inevitable intimacy. He enjoyed what was happening, not hiding a slight smile, but emotions were also boiling inside him. 
Fiona suddenly realized that this very moment could become the point of no return everything that was familiar and familiar could change forever. She froze for a moment when her hand touched the first button on his shirt. An inner voice somewhere deep inside whispered to her to stop, but this whisper was barely audible against the background of the wave of emotions that covered her headlong. She slowly began to unfasten the buttons, as if her every gesture was weighed, checked for truth. Mixed feelings overwhelmed her devotion and duty fought with unbidden passion. Fiona tried to suppress her growing arousal, but every moment around him only intensified her desire. Her thoughts were racing. Everything that was happening felt like a dream that I didn't want to interrupt. But at the same time, she felt a heaviness in her soul. Everything that's happening now could change her life forever. This moment was too important, too fateful, and they both knew it. But how could it end? How will their fate turn after they cross this border? When their bodies, wrapped in warmth, were on the bed, their conversation took on a new, deeper meaning. This was not just a physical impulse, not a random surge of passion. There was real emotional intimacy in their words and gestures. They began sharing memories of their lives, discussing what led them to this moment. It was as if each of them had finally found in the other something that they had been looking for for so long, but could not find in anyone else. Their revelations flowed easily and naturally, as if they had been waiting their whole lives for this. After the passion subsided and both leaned back wearily on the pillows, their breathing gradually returned to normal, but the silence between them was filled with meaning. Fiona was still trying to comprehend what had just happened. Her mind was captured by chaos on the one hand, she felt guilty for her actions, for betraying her principles and promises that she had made in the past. But on the other hand, she could not deny the new, deep experience that she had just experienced. This moment was, in fact, liberating. He let her know that she was capable of more than she ever thought possible. But at the same time, a heaviness remained in my soul, as if this liberation came at too high a price. Lying next to Sid, Fiona listened to his calm breathing and felt their conversation return to real life. They discussed their dreams, fears, and plans for the future. These frank conversations brought them even closer, although Fiona understood that this whole situation went beyond her usual understanding of relationships. There was a mixed feeling in her heart. On the one hand, she found in Sid something dear and close, and on the other hand, she realized that all this could not but entail consequences. You know this will change everything, Sid said quietly, without taking his eyes off her face. Fiona just nodded, feeling her heart beat faster. She reached out to him, as if they were drawn by an unknown force that they could not control. But what if we regret it? Her voice sounded barely audible, as if fear and doubt were still breaking through the wall of emotions. And if we don't, We'll regret it even more, Sid smiled, and there was something in his eyes that pushed her to a decision. He gently ran his fingers over her arms as he continued, Fiona, this may not be right, but when you're around, nothing else matters. Do you think we can go back? She asked quietly. No, Sid answered honestly, his voice becoming more serious, but maybe it's for the better. You understand that after this everything will change? There was a trace of doubt in her voice. Sid took her hand and gently pulled her closer. You want this too, don't you? His gaze was full of sincerity. Yes, she finally admitted, and at that moment the whole weight of doubt seemed to recede into the background. When their bodies, wrapped in warmth, were on the bed, the conversation took on a new, deeper meaning. After the passion subsided and both leaned back wearily on the pillows, their breathing gradually returned to normal, but the silence between them was filled with meaning. So what now? Fiona asked, turning her head in his direction. Now we'll just move on, Sid answered calmly, looking at the ceiling. I don't know where this will lead, but something tells me that we should take the risk. Fiona thought for a moment. What if we are wrong? Sid smiled, leaning towards her ear. So this will be our mistake and I'm ready to accept it with you. She nodded, closing her eyes. Both were slowly recovering from their mutual pleasure. They rose to go to the toilet and freshen up, talking quietly so as not to disturb the almost sacred silence that filled the room. Lying side by side on the bed again, 
Their hands roamed over their bodies, theirs, and each other's. Sid suddenly proposed, Hey, want to experiment a little. Experiment? Fiona thought for a moment, but nodded in response. This evening is already the craziest evening of my life. Sid paused for a moment to accept her nod and continued, Let's try a few other positions. Well, okay, still in high spirits, Fiona sat on the bed and looked expectantly at Sid, waiting for further instructions. Well, Sid announced loudly, trying to sound more confident than he actually felt. Let's start by boosting my morale. My God, she thought to herself. I really like what I do. I'm enjoying this bad girl I've become now. Sid and Fiona, enjoying their time together, continued to explore new dimensions of their communication. Sid watched with a smile as Fiona tried to create a comfortable atmosphere for both of them, adapting to his desires and movements. When they found a comfortable position, Fiona suggested changing positions. How about we try something different? She asked with a smile. Sure, why not? Sid replied, helping her get comfortable. Fiona took a new pose, joking a little. It seems like we should already know what's what, but we still sometimes manage to lose the rhythm. They both laughed, realizing that even in the most intimate moments, awkwardness can become part of a natural process. Fiona sat opposite Sid, and they looked at each other with warmth and understanding. She began to move slowly, trying to maintain their unity, but this time she emphasized her comfort and slow, rhythmic movements. How do you like that? she asked quietly, sitting up slightly on his hips. Very good, he replied, leaning slightly towards her to run his fingers through her hair. Their eyes met again, and Fiona smiled gently, stroking her neck, as if trying to relax even more. They maintained this pace, enjoying every moment without rushing. From time to time they stopped to catch their breath, allowing their rhythm to find a new balance. Fiona leaned on Sid, their breathing slowly synchronized. They often changed positions, checking which one was more comfortable, discussing this with humor and goodwill. You try so hard for both of us, Sid admitted, stroking her back. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the fact that you always think about my convenience, she replied, slightly closing her eyes from the pleasure arising in the moment. Their conversations allowed them to maintain lightness and avoid tension that could arise during awkward moments. They decided to diversify their time together and try different forms of intimacy, but without rushing. At one point, when they were discussing their desires and preferences, Fiona with a smile suggested returning to their usual methods of communication, which caused a warm laugh from both of them. During this long session, every time her energy or enthusiasm began to wane, Fiona would imagine her dear husband Marcus having sex with someone else, be it a cheap, easy-to-get girl whom he brought to his room and mercilessly fucked on the bed, or the maid leaning over the edge of the bed, grumbling, but not too loudly, while he had sex with her until she was unconscious, or a smart and strong businesswoman who invited him to her penthouse, where she truly had him, forcing him to obey her will. These fantasies awakened her again each time, giving her a new wave of erotic energy that surprised her partner. It seemed like a dream. At least the excitement is turbocharged, amplified to the maximum. However, Fiona suspected that these overwhelming sensations and bursts of arousal were due to the novelty of it, the naughtiness, and perhaps the fact that it was the first time she had sex with someone other than her husband. She swore to herself that this would be the only time. Never ever, but be that as it may, they continued to have sex until the early morning. Until Sid said, I have to go. Fiona, despite knowing internally that she shouldn't be doing this, that she was cheating didn't want it to end. She was enjoying it too much. Oh no, let's do it one more time, please. Um, well, maybe. I can't promise, but I'll try, Sid replied. Fiona looked down as if embarrassed and whispered quietly, maybe we can do this again. Here's a milder paraphrase. These words revived Sid again, and his confidence gradually returned. Fiona stood up, and, to their surprise, he was able to continue, feeling a strong attraction. The feeling of closeness between them was indescribably pleasant, filled with a deep connection. When their bodies touched, 
Fiona felt a wave of pleasure that seemed to take over her completely. Oh, oh, ah, she exclaimed, her body trembling from the emotions she was experiencing. Sid continued to move, feeling a growing excitement that covered him completely. He took small pauses from time to time to maintain comfort for both of them. With each moment, they reached new heights of pleasure. In the end, Sid, completely immersed in their shared emotions, squeezed Fiona, holding her close to him. Both felt a deep sense of satisfaction that coincided at that moment. Wow, they exclaimed at the same time. I've never felt this way before, Sid said with a smile, pulling on the clothes scattered around the room. Glancing at Fiona, who was still lying on the bed, he added gratefully, thank you. It was, well, just incredible, Fiona purred. I couldn't agree more, Sid replied with a grin. Are you sure you can't make it one more time? She asked hopefully. With pleasure, I really would love to. But I have a plane that I need to catch. As he hurried to the door, he looked over his shoulder and added, It was great. Sid slipped out the door, leaving Fiona still lying on the rumpled bed, stroking herself despite her protests against his leaving. Fiona couldn't believe that that slutty woman, that daring, easily accessible girl was her. After waiting a couple of minutes, hoping that he would return, she finally forced herself to get out of bed and go to the shower. There, she realized that she had successfully suppressed her feelings of guilt by convincing herself that Sid was most likely right her husband probably also cheated regularly during his business trips. Fiona had no doubt that her casual relationship with Sid was, at best, fleeting and barely touched her life. And it would have stayed that way if not for Marcus, whom Sid met by chance in the hallway as he was leaving the room, congratulating himself on having truly great sex, a great one-night stand. So proud of himself, Sid whispered, as if in a theatrical manner, as he left Fiona's room, Damn it. This woman is tireless. I barely made it out. And then he noticed another traveler standing in the corridor and looking intently at him. Sid stopped for a moment and, turning to him, added, It's not that I want to run away, but I need to get ready for an early flight. But man, this girl knows how to have sex, any position. Nodding towards the door, he added, If you want real pleasure, just knock. She calls herself Fi, like Fiona or something. Marcus just nodded, stunned, but Sid continued, shaking his head in admiration. Jesus, what a woman, simply amazing. Turning towards the elevators, Sid said over his shoulder, good luck. When the elevator doors closed, cutting off Sid's view of his random interlocutor, Marcus remained standing, frozen in place. His stunned gaze moved from the closed elevator doors to the door of the room where his wife was, and he froze, pondering what he had heard. Meanwhile, Sid, thinking that he should have boasted even more, reflected. It's not every day you can boast of such a hat trick, especially with a married woman. Marcus walked to the door of his wife's room, leaned his ear, and listened. He heard the shower turn on and quietly left without giving any sign of his presence. Fiona, standing under the hot streams of water, swore to herself, never again. She made herself promise that it was a one-time mistake and that she would never cheat again. She swore that from now on she would speak only the truth. Sid, still in awe of the incredible encounter, boarded his plane with a huge grin, never leaving his face. A few hours later, he was already far away in a new city, ready for the next adventure. Later that morning, Marcus called Fiona from a waiting room in Denver, although he allowed her to believe he was calling from Seattle. He briefly mentioned delayed meetings, but said nothing about unexpected flight delays or what was actually in Denver. I'm trying to catch an earlier flight to get home. Well, I'm not leaving here until tonight, so take your time for me. Fine, then I'll see you at home. Yes, see you. Love you. And I love you. Bye. Bye, darling. Fiona was relieved and relieved that her voice sounded so normal. God bless she breathed out loud with relief. When she finally returned home late that evening, she was not surprised that Marcus was already there. He met her at the door, and they exchanged hugs and kisses of greeting. How was the trip? he asked.
Fiona's response was relaxed and casual. Oh, as usual, nothing new. She looked at her husband, who handed her a glass of wine, and she thought she detected tension in his posture. How was your trip? she asked, taking their usual Pinot Gris. Marcus raised his glass, took a small sip, and, speaking slowly and calmly, trying to hide a subtle grin, asked with deliberate nonchalance. Just wondering, how many men did you fuck last night? What? Fiona choked and almost dropped her glass. I know of at least one thing. I met him as he was leaving your room early in the morning. He stopped me himself, as if by accident, and you know, by pure chance he stopped me to compliment me on what great sex he had just had. Marcus allowed himself a slight grin while Fiona, his dear wife, stood there with her eyes wide open and her jaw slack. Here are his exact words, Marcus consulted his notepad. Almost verbatim, I wrote down right away. Damn it, this woman is tireless. I barely got out, not that I wanted it, but I had to fly away. But he continued to praise. Man, this girl knows how to have sex. She's probably still ready for the next one. If you want some fun, just knock on the door, he said, pointing to your number. She calls herself Phi or something like that. HM, he literally offered me your test. Marcus continued, sorry for being rude, but that's what he said. Fiona stood motionless, stunned by her husband's words, her mouth slightly open and her face pale. Marcus took another sip from his glass and, looking at her carefully, continued. He added, almost under his breath, but I still heard. Jesus, what an amazing woman, simply incredible. As he headed towards the elevators, he muttered something about how he liked having married women, Marcus paused, draining his glass. He looked at his wife with an expression on his face that seemed to say, Well, what do you say? But Fiona stood there in shock, paralyzed by guilt, shame, and confusion. Her lips trembled as if she was trying to say something, but the words never came. Having finished his story, Marcus put his glass on the table and calmly added, Well, at least you took a shower after that. Fiona coughed, trying to find words. Her mind was working at full speed, but all attempts to come up with an excuse or explanation were crushed by the ruthless reality. Finally, unexpectedly for Marcus, she tried to go on the offensive. What about you? She gasped, trying to hide her fear and guilt behind her harsh tone. What about you, Marcus? What about me? He asked, genuinely surprised by her answer. When you didn't answer the phone, Sid that was his name assured me with absolute certainty that you were also sleeping with someone. What, me? No, never, no way, Marcus protested, fairly honestly, if a little exaggerated. Yes, it seems I played by the old rules. And you, apparently, played by some new, different rules. Harm. I didn't even know they had changed. When did they change, Fi? I don't know, Fee answered although the question was clearly rhetorical. Suddenly starting to sob, she continued, I, I, I. Sob, sob, did it just once. This only happened once. And I'm so sorry. Come on, how can you be so gullible? A complete stranger tells you that I'm cheating on you, and you believe him without a single piece of evidence. Give me a break. Marcus fell silent for a moment, adopting a deliberately dramatic pose of thoughtfulness. I find it hard to believe your story, too. You see, the guy I met leaving your room at dawn praised you so enthusiastically that you, in any case, must be much more experienced and more practiced than you admit than you claim. No, no, I'm not like that. I've never done this before. Come on. Well, maybe, Fiona whispered, trying to soften the damage they had done to their marriage. Well, you know how much I love sex. Shrugging her shoulders, she seemed to hint that this explained everything. Maybe I'm just a natural talent. Oh yes, just an unexplored source of hidden abilities, he agreed, his voice full of sarcasm. Nevertheless, you changed. I slept with someone else. Have you never cheated? Oh no, don't you dare turn your focus on me, Marcus demanded before declaring his complete allegiance. I have never been unfaithful to you. He paused, giving her a thoughtful look. I forget to take my phone off airplane mode, 
and you immediately jump to conclusions, assuming the worst. Thank you. The truth and pain in his voice and face were so convincing that Fiona began to desperately apologize through her tears. Fiona's betrayal had struck him, struck him, with how painful it had been, how disappointing. You know, I've had my temptations over the years, Marcus said quietly, ignoring his guilty wife's pleas for forgiveness. Just recently, a woman at a bar invited me to her hotel room. The silence of their house was broken only by Fiona's sobs. I politely declined. Staring into space, Marcus quietly continued, and in Dallas last month, Uo, what a woman, such a figure, rubbed against me. He paused, obviously thinking. But I resisted. I always resisted. Gathering his courage, Marcus turned to his trembling wife. So how many times have you cheated? How often? Only on business trips or at social events too? Or maybe at home? When was I away? No, never, Fiona moaned. All her strength was gone. Perhaps, Marcus said in a rather neutral tone, however, I can't know for sure because I can't trust you anymore. You understand this, don't you? Although the question was clearly rhetorical, Fee gave a slight, reluctant nod in response as her husband began his rebuke again. You see, cheaters, by definition, lie. Perhaps I will choose to believe that you only betray moral principles and decency on business trips. But anyway, what about this said? Yes, Sid's praise seems quite contradictory to your claim that this was the first and only time. Then, tilting his head slightly, Marcus asked, Was he good? He didn't really want to know. It just came out, but since he asked, he had to find out the answer. Well, Fiona muttered, reminding herself barely audibly, I promised to tell the truth, which means I can't choose when to be honest and when to lie. I must tell the whole truth, regardless of the consequences. The truth is absolute. She raised her head and looked Marcus in the eyes. Honestly, yes, amazing. Marcus was clearly shocked by the unexpected frankness of her answer. It tore his heart and soul. He couldn't hold back any longer. Did you please him? Fiona nodded, but didn't have time to say anything before her offended husband continued, his voice filled with pain and venom. Like the cheating bitch you obviously are. Fi winced, but didn't react any further. I think it goes without saying that you pleased him. And judging by the rave reviews from What's His Name Sid, I'm guessing you didn't limit yourself to just one position, huh? Moving into the bedroom, Marcus motioned that he expected his wife to follow him. Like an automaton, he began to take off his clothes. As penance, I think I'll have to use the only untouched place you have left, Sid's exclamation. Shaking her head, Fiona whispered, I'm so, so sorry, darling. You can't even imagine how sad it is but Sid has already done it. Marcus's eyes went wide. Crap! With a slow nod, he asked, did he take it against your will? No. Fi shook her head heavily. He asked, I agreed. After a long pause, Fiona added, I fooled myself into thinking it was just a meaningless exchange. I'm so sorry that I doubted you. You must know that I love only you and that I make love only to you, only to you. Yes, sure, I only know one thing you are an unfaithful, easily accessible girl. His desperate wife began again to claim, this time with tears, that this was the only time. She begged for forgiveness, almost piteously. However, Marcus suddenly realized that he was actually already quite confident in the veracity of Fiona's story and her claim that it had only happened once. Fiona tried to object again, but Marcus didn't want to hear it. He pretended not to believe her and referred to the subsequent loss of trust, which was true. I just don't trust you. I can't do it anymore. Without saying another word, Marcus laid his cheating wife on the bed and began to fuck her hard. To both of them's surprise, Fiona felt pleasure despite the roughness of it and the intensity of the situation. They lay side by side, looking at the ceiling, breathing heavily. Fiona tried to arouse Marcus orally, but he sharply pulled her back. Leave me alone. After a long, tense silence, Marcus whispered, Suppose you are telling the truth. You must agree. Fine. Okay, Fiona chimed in. 
I admit it. I was wrong just once, mind you, just once. You have to admit that even one time is too many. With a sad nod and downcast eyes, Fiona whispered again, I'm so, so sorry. And she slowly extended her hand to comfort him. However, he slammed her hand away, growling, I said leave me alone. Then, in a low, menacing voice, he added, Get out of here. Go sleep in the guest room. Leave me alone. Fiona bit back her protest, collected her clothes and her still unpacked bag, and quietly, sobbing, left the room. The next morning, Fiona walked into the master bedroom, already fully dressed, with coffee and a pastry. Marcus sat down, accepted the cup, and nodded in acknowledgement. Maybe we can try again later. He was calmer now, and it became clear that he was talking about making love. Fiona nodded in response, turned, and left. They communicated politely throughout the day, touching only on everyday issues. Indeed, it seemed that Marcus, albeit reluctantly, had forgiven his unfaithful wife. In the evening, when Fiona could no longer stand this silence sitting together in front of the TV, she stood up and said goodbye. To her surprise, Marcus followed her into the guest room, took off his clothes and silently lay down on the bed, not looking at her. He was lying on his side, facing away from Fiona. She carefully pulled herself towards him, as if trying to hug him from a distance. She timidly reached out to touch him, but he suddenly turned over on his back. How could you? How could you do this to me to us? I thought we had something special. We had, we have, Fiona began but not special enough. Apparently you had something better with that asshole, something amazing. Suddenly he became weak, as if all his emotional strength had been drained from him. I know it's a tired, overused cliche, but it really was just sex, Fiona repeated, having a hard time believing what she was saying about herself. Simply amazing sex, Marcus added dryly. But I love only you, Fiona objected hotly. Perhaps, but... I'm so terribly sorry, she whispered again. You, at least for the next few nights, sleep in this room. I need time to digest all this. I'll go to my room, he muttered, turning and walking out of the room into the corridor. In the days that followed, Fiona diligently gave him space and offered as much love as he was willing to accept. She watched from afar to see if there was any sign that his feelings for her were beginning to soften. Whenever the opportunity arose, she repeated her burning desire again and again. I just want everything to go back to the way it was. I'm so, so sorry I ruined all of this. I just want to get back what we had before. Tears streamed down her cheeks. Can you ever forgive me? Will you ever let me feel your touch, the warmth of your body again? Although it was not noticeable outwardly, Marcus heard her pleas and he thought a lot about their situation about his situation almost all the time. I don't know, every time we touch each other, I only think about how he caressed your body, excited you gave you pleasure. The constant tension from their established relationship exhausted Marcus, and one day, deciding to quickly put an end to his thoughts, he invited his wife back to their marital bed. Over the next few days, it seemed as if the cold between them had begun to thaw at least on the surface. Marcus seemed supportive enough that Fiona could initiate sexual intimacy. However, their attempts to rekindle the relationship and restore intimacy ended in failure. Every night they went to the bedroom with the intention of making love tender, but at the same time full of tension. However, despite their efforts, Marcus could not achieve pleasure. How do we overcome this? Fiona thought desperately. Being a resourceful woman, a few days later she came up with an idea. Her trembling body made it clear how unpleasant she found this proposal. In fact, the thought of even seriously considering such an option disgusted her. However, her next step surprised Marcus so much that his eyes widened and his jaw dropped. Say that again, he asked incredulously. We talked earlier about fair retribution, so now it's your turn. Taking a deep breath, Fiona quickly continued, What I did was wrong, and I really regret it. But despite how disgusting the idea is to me, I think maybe you need revenge. Marcus stared at her, not believing his ears. They say that two evils do not make one good. She paused for a moment, 
Fiona could hardly bear the thought of herself suggesting this, but perhaps in some cases they do. What gives you confidence that I haven't already taken my toll? Quit, so to speak. Marcus said with a cold smile, his voice sounding threatening. He glanced at her intently, then continued in a more conversational tone. Why just the other day? What was her name? No matter a very striking lady, so mature, with silver hair, sat down on a bar stool next to me, and after a short silence said, Do you want to buy me a drink first, or let's go straight to my room and have sex? Fiona was stunned. She couldn't tell if he was admitting to his own infidelities or just playing with her mind. What does it feel like? Think how painful it would be if it turned out to be true. She could not object because she was guilty of the same thing. But you know what, in fact, I have never, throughout our marriage, and even during our meetings before marriage, never cheated on you. It's a shame you can't say the same. Fiona had long ago promised herself to never be unfaithful again. Sobbing quietly, she remained silent. But over time, Marcus still could not get close to his wife again. He couldn't get rid of the pictures that Sid had painted in his mind. He couldn't shake the images of her passionate, unbridled connection with a stranger. Fiona understood that Marcus's problems with the sexual side of their relationship were essentially psychosomatic. However, the consequences of these problems were very real and seriously interfered with their reconciliation. She mused, but if we don't find a way to make things right, then our marriage is probably doomed. Once again giving her husband free reign, Fiona moved back into the guest room, hoping that this would help or at least change something. Unfortunately for her, this did not produce any results. Thinking back to her night with Sid, she was overcome with memories of the betrayal of how excited she was, of that sweet satisfaction. A smile flashed across her face for a moment, but was quickly replaced by a frown. It definitely wasn't worth it, she said to herself over and over again. So, almost unnoticed, Fiona returned to the master bedroom. Marcus's anger and despair, at least outwardly, had already subsided, and although he did not show much joy at her return, he did not object to her returning to their marital bed. They slept peacefully and Marcus didn't mind her touch. Everything was starting to resemble their old times. In fact, several times a week they tried to make love again. They both became more and more sad with each new failure, and their relationship gradually disintegrated. Oh, by the way, Marcus announced one night as they turned out the lights, I have to go back to Seattle next week for those meetings we postponed. Fiona thought this would be the perfect time for Marcus to get his revenge, but decided it was best to leave it without comment. When he returned a few days later, Fiona was all on edge, the anticipation and anxiety were tearing her apart. Unable to bear it, she asked as soon as he put down the suitcase, Well, are we even now? Marcus suddenly turned sharply towards her, his face full of rage. Is that all you care about? He looked at her intently. The silence between them became almost palpable. No, I didn't sleep with anyone. I don't want to have sex with anyone. He calmed down a little and added, with sadness in his voice, I thought about this a lot while I was away, and I realized that I couldn't live with you anymore. Fiona's jaw dropped. Her eyes opened wide. B but how? It hurts too much, he explained. You can stay in the apartment until we sell it. I am filing for divorce due to irreconcilable differences. Most likely, next week you will be served with a summons. Oh my God, Fiona exclaimed, but from his appearance it was clear that there would be no discussion he had already made his decision. She whispered, I'm so sorry. It's a shame it ended like this, Marcus said as he picked up his suitcase and walked out the door. As the door closed behind her soon-to-be ex-husband, Fiona's legs gave way, and she collapsed to the floor in despair. One mistake really ruined her marriage. She foolishly traded the pleasure of one night for a life of happiness. It wasn't worth it. Fiona was left alone in their spacious, now almost empty apartment, overcome with despair and a sense of complete loss. Everything that happened between them moments of joy, long conversations at night, their dreams together now seemed like a distant illusion. She sat on the floor, hugging her knees, 
trying to find the strength to at least stand up. But she knew, at that moment the world around her collapsed. The weeks dragged on endlessly. Marcus pulled away completely, his silence only intensifying Fiona's pain. She wanted to fight, she wanted to somehow correct the situation, but she understood that there was no turning back. Their marriage was like a broken mirror. No matter how much you pick up the pieces, cracks will still remain. One morning a summons was delivered to her. The paper in her hands seemed cold, like those relationships that once seemed warm and strong. She knew it was inevitable, but that realization didn't make the pain any easier. One evening, sitting on the sofa with a cup of iced tea in her hands, Fiona wondered, why? What made her cheat on Marcus at that moment? Was it a desire for sensation, an escape from boredom, or just a moment of weakness? It didn't matter now. What's done is done, and the price she paid for her mistake was too high. But life moved on. A few months later, after their apartment was sold, Marcus disappeared from her life completely. She was left in an empty space, both physically and emotionally. But in this emptiness, there was room for something new. Fiona gradually began to rebuild her life. She sought forgiveness within herself, although it was the most difficult. She tried to distract herself with work, make new acquaintances, but at night, lying in bed, one thought did not leave her mind. What if she had acted differently? One day, a year after the divorce, Fiona ran into Marcus in a cafe. He was with another woman, his face was calm, and he looked much happier than when they were together. Their eyes met for a moment, but he turned away as if she were a stranger. This was the final point. Fiona realized that she cannot change the past, but she has a future. Her life, although ruined the moment she made the choice to cheat, did not end. She began a new journey no longer with Marcus, but with a version of herself who realized a lot and hoped for new happiness. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one.